A máme tu človeka, ktorý sa volá Bjarný Rúnar Ingvarsson, čiže syn Ingvara. A je dopravným inžinierom vedúcim oddelenia dopravy v Mexte Reykjavík a vystúpi s prezentáciou, ktorá bude hovoriť o tom, ako sa autocentrické mesto stane postupne živou metropolou, najmä z pohľadu dopravy. Predtým, ako začal pracovať pre mesto Reykjavík, pôsobil ako konzultant v oblasti dopravy a samozrejme, že pohybuje sa aj na tej taktické, na strategickej úrovni, nastavuje strategické projekty mesta, ale aj dopravné politiky mesta. Absolvoval Technickú univerzitu v Mníchove v odbore dopravné systémy s dôrazom na verejnú a železničnú dopravu. A ja som možno na niektoré veci zabudla, ale on určite ešte povie viacej. So the floor is yours. Please go on. Thank you very much and thank you for welcoming me to uh, this beautiful city. It's an amazing city and so nice to see people again. I've been talking to a computer for the last three years or so. And so nice to be outside and see people. Uh, this uh, presentation I'll give today is mainly focused on infrastructure. You'll have to apologize for that. Uh, when implementing uh, bike plans, you'll have to remember the soft measures as well. Infrastructure is not enough by itself. But anyways, that's what I'll focus on today. Uh, the Vikings were actually good at many things, uh, but building houses is not one of them. This is what Reykjavik City looked like in 1966. This was the uh, pinnacle for the new, uh, of the new master plan, which was uh, introduced in 1962. Uh, this new road network that was laid out and was supposed to take over uh, as the main transportation system in the capital area. In this master plan, it actually said until every adult has his own or has their own car. That was the main goal. It was obvious. They were not hiding it or anything. Um, and that led to a very sprawled out city, which we are facing today. And these pictures, they practically remain the same in some places. Uh, but luckily, we made some changes in, in other areas. Um, this I intersection was, uh, has been uh, planned as a multi-level or, or grade separated uh, intersection for so many years in, in most, most master plans since the 1962. Uh, here is one diverging diamond uh, intersection or one uh, uh, type of intersection which was planned. Uh, luckily, that was not realized, so uh, we have still a livable area around this intersection. Uh, and yeah, the, uh, there was planned elevated highways throughout the city center, and most of the city center was actually planned for demolishment, or to be demolished. Uh, luckily, that, that was not uh, what happened. This image was taken in uh, around 1960-something, 1970s, uh, and this is what it looks like from the same spot. It's not really recognizable. But the, uh, the, the other buildings, they actually remain, most of them. Uh, this is the same building, just from another perspective, and you can see how car-oriented uh, car it was. Uh, this is the mosaic, actually, that Ada pointed out uh, yesterday. Uh, and this is uh, how it looked like in Christmas, last Christmas. So we are redeveloping this, these areas to accommodate people instead of cars. This, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, this, this has resulted in, in, in passenger vehicles taking over the city, of, obviously. And as you can see, bicycle, uh, this model share of bicycle was only 0.2% uh, in 2002. And that was the problems we were facing. It was not really meant for people, the city itself. Uh, even though we knew that mixed traffic is not good for cities and is practically uh, one of the worst uh, ways to, to uh, sorry, one of the worst ways to move people around. Uh, but one of the best ways is quicker in, in uh, most journeys, about, uh, less than five kilometers. About 70% of all journeys in Reykjavik are less than five kilometers in length. So bicycles should be the way to go and they are also much uh, more uh, take much much more le uh, more less space than than cars and they also pollute less far less obviously uh, 
the capital area is growing. It's growing by 90 people every day, uh, every week, I'm sorry. That equals to around 18 vehicles or 18 full cars or around one bus, packed bus. Uh, up until the uh, millennia, we designed cities to accommodate cars and move cars around. And after the millennium, we changed the question to how to move people around. And Reykjavik being an isolated, or Iceland being an isolated island in the North Atlantic somewhere, we are always 10 years late. So uh, we started in, in 2010s. Uh, with the first bike plan being introduced in 2010. And that changed a lot, and that changed basically uh, the, the, the city itself. It laid out a grid network uh, of bicycle or, or bikeable routes, uh, which the, 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 these did not uh, implement any, uh, or depict any uh, uh, dedicated infrastructure for bicycles, but it, it, it laid out bicycle network or, or bike network that was supposed to be bikeable. We did see some infrastructure built uh, specifically for bikes and we learned a lot from them. Uh, one of the main takes from this uh, built up was that we should get expertise from abroad and see how we should do things. And uh, that was uh, a bit too late for the 2015 plan. But anyway, we learned something. Uh, we learned that we should focus on, on people and infrastructure. Uh, as I mentioned, I, I do not mention the, or go through the, uh, the soft measures, but those are important as well. Uh, but as you can see, there was quite extensive uh, uh, plan for build up of, of, uh, of dedicated bicycle infrastructure. That's the red lines on, on this map. We've turned streets or roads that look like this and turn them into this. And we've turned this road from this into this. And the slum of Reykjavik used to look like this in 2013, looks like this today. And when we implemented the, the, uh, the uh, dedicated bike lanes and, and redid the, the street, it's like the houses just painted themselves and the anti lots, they actually became uh, became a, a construction site. It was amazing to see. This is another place uh, at the same street, and this is what it looks like today. It's amazing what just uh, making, this, making the streets beautiful uh, has an impact on, on the uh, surroundings. Uh, along with this, we, uh, or along with, with the municipalities in the capital area, we made a new wayfinding system, which is based on the uh, Vienna Convention, as you can see. Uh, we also made guidelines, uh, design guidelines for bicycles, and we also made uh, a network which was supposed to be uh, the, or is the main network for commuting and, and has the highest priority when it comes to new infrastructure. Uh, this has changed the modal split uh, quite drastically. Still, uh, private vehicles are the uh, primary mode of transport, but uh, bicycle have, uh, or bicycle traffic has, has grown a lot. Uh, in 2011, it was actually up to 5% from just 0.2% in 2002. And in 2019, it was up to 7%. And our feeling is that it, it has actually grown since then. And we know we're on the right path because we asked people, how do you want to commute? Since 75% uh, of people commute by car, uh, we thought we were uh, perhaps looking at, at uh, people that did not want to change, that it was just something in the mentality. But people actually do want to change. Pe for only 40% want to commute by car, but 60% want to commute by other means. Uh, and that is reflected in the new master plan for Reykjavik, which, has the, which is fairly ambitious. Uh, they want to reduce car traffic from 75% of modal split to 50, increase the uh, share of public transport from 4 to 15, and uh, walking and cycling from, 30, uh, from 21 to 35. And as you can see, the inverted pyramid uh, emphasizes walking and, and uh, biking above uh, private vehicles. Uh, just last year, we made the third installment of the uh, bike plan. And we got help from, from uh, Dutch advisors these uh, this time around. 
uh, called Mobicon. Uh, and th uh, the bike plan was actually led by a, a female who is uh, an activist, and she wanted the bike plan to look uh, very pretty pink, so everything's pink. It, it gets to people. People actually like it. Uh, but this is what the uh, bike path network, dedicated bike path net uh, network, looked like in 2010, uh, 2020. I'm sorry, and this is the ambitions for uh, 2030. So it's uh, more than doubling the the infrastructure uh, in kilometers. Uh, and furthermore, we, we asked Mobicon to help us uh, redesign uh, intersections and, uh, or show us how they would uh, design intersections. Uh, some, some, uh, we gave them traffic numbers and, and, then, and they actually pointed out how they would do it. Uh, here you can see an intersection where two slip lanes have been removed and it, it, it's actually on a really good diet, I can see. Uh, through lanes are, are reduced and, and uh, dedicated turning lanes are, are also reduced. And uh, bike network is, is or, or the connectivity of the bike network is, is greatly improved. Uh, and this is another uh, place with, with a bit more traffic. Uh, they uh, removed all the, uh, the slip lanes and, uh, and uh, connected the uh, bike, uh, dedicated bike lanes. And also, a part of it was to show uh, how we should uh, design uh, bike paths in uh, or at intersections. <clears throat> uh, another ongoing project is a BRT system in the capital area. Uh, and uh, one main focus of the BRT system is a bike network to increase the bike infrastructure. Uh, this is the desired uh, cross-section for the BRT system. And at every station, uh, there will be uh, bike storage infrastructure. Another measures we have taken is reducing the, the speed limits in the entire city from uh, 50 on average, or typical 50, down to 30 in, inside the neighborhoods and 40 on, on uh, connecting roads. And, uh, but unfo unfortunately, we don't have control over the speed limits of the uh, roads with the highest speed limits. That's uh, the National uh, Road Administration. But we are hoping they will uh, join us in the effort of, of making the city more livable. And so, uh, this is an intersection uh, as it looks today. We have uh, new development just to the southeast and we have some old development or old housing uh, to the east. And we are taking these intersections and we are looking how can we design this for people. Uh, and this is how we imagine it being in the future. We are trying to remove uh, car lanes and remove vehicles from the uh, top surface and make uh, space for, for uh, people and, and bikers as well. As well, uh, as like, uh, as well. So I would like to uh, thank you very much, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you bike a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, a lot of encouragement that things are possible to do. Ja sa spýtam, najprv dáme priestor na otázku. Poprosím zase s dvihnutím ruky, keby ste dali signál, že máte záujem buď niečo okomentovať, alebo si overiť nejakú hypotézu. Tretí rád odpredu, pán, čo tam tričku, mikrofón sa blíži. Nech, nech sa páči. A poprosím vás, keby ste sa predstavili, mm. že to ste, za koho hovoríte. Uh, uh, my name is uh, Laurinec Branislav. I'm from uh, Ministry of uh, uh, Transport and uh, Construction. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, you mentioned about uh, uh, design, uh, design of uh, you know, cyclo infrastructure in Reykjavik. Uh, I'm wondering uh, about the managing uh, of uh, design manual. Uh, was it made uh, on the municipal level or was it managed by 
by uh, state, uh, other state authorities on the central level? Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, this is actually uh, one of the, the best examples of co-work uh, in the capital area. It's all the municipalities and also the road and coastal administration that uh, participated in this. Uh, we are lucky we are seeing renewal in, in the road administration. Until now, they've only wanted to focus on roads and not uh, streets. Uh, but they uh, wanted to participate and, and actually were uh, heavily involved in making these guidelines as well with the municipalities, so both. Uh, was it uh, referring, uh, referring a uh, whole, the uh, whole uh, city infrastructure uh, like, uh, like uh, roads for, for cars and uh, uh, cyclo uh, and, uh, and for uh, separate uh, cyclo routes as well? Uh, as what made as a global global concept for uh, for all kinds of uh, all kinds of roads in the city, or j just for uh, for uh, segregate uh, cyclo routes. We are emphasizing uh, on so so we didn't really have any bike, bicycle infrastructure until about 2010 or so. Uh, so we are emphasizing on connecting the neighborhoods. Uh, Perhaps sometime uh, after 2025, I guess, we'll uh, go further into the neighborhoods. But as of now, we are just trying to connect the neighborhoods. So not uh, every street has the dedicated lanes. But that's, that's the aim. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I ha is there any? Okay, tam zadu, dobre za stromom, tak teraz už, uh, už vidím. Nech sa páči, pán Svetlo, modrej košeli, úplne vzadu. Sorry, I'm a bit stuck behind the tree. Um, okay. My name is uh, Wout Ritzema from the Netherlands. Um, I have a question about your, um, the way to get people out of the car. So from the car into the, from the car on the bike. Um, the examples that you are showing, uh, they look like that you add biking infrastructure and that as an effect of that, it increases the model split from a, a 0.2% for the bikes up until 5, 6 or 7. Um, is that the only thing that happened to increase the model share or did you do, uh, did you take other measures? Uh, no, that was not the only thing we did. Uh, we, there was actually quite a lot of effort put into it. Um, so uh, there has been some road diets, as, you shown, as I've shown, uh, where uh, we took lanes and turned them into, into uh, separate bike paths. Uh, but we also have held competitions where uh, companies compete against each other uh, to have the highest mileage in a month, uh, cycling to work and cycling to schools. Uh, so competition between schools and competition between uh, between workplaces. Uh, and we've had some some more uh, soft measures. And as I said uh, in the beginning, this uh, presentation was mainly focused on infrastructure. Perhaps I should have included a lot more uh, about the soft measures because those are those are paramount as well, definitely. Uh, is there any more, uh, are there any more questions? If not, I have one, because you mentioned a lot of measures, but probably you have somebody who is above you in the structure, hierarchical structure of municipality. So how is it with the support of these people, or uh, how do you have to negotiate? Or This is a brilliant question. So luckily we have, uh, we have had a mayor, just like Trnava, uh, who is really into biking, and that is that is of utmost importance, uh, and that basically kickstarted it all. Uh, now uh, all political parties agree on that we have to build more bicycle infrastructure. Mm -hmm. The discussion is not about whether or not to build something or uh, or, or however. Uh, the emphasis is basically on um, how much money we want to put into this. Uh, 
Uh, and, but all political parties now agree on, on building further infrastructure and uh, putting more mon money into, into biking. Uh, is there at least a part or piece of an, uh, knowing that there is a climate crisis and your icebergs are melting? Yeah, we, we, uh, we do feel the effect of, of climate change uh, in Iceland, definitely. And uh, probably one of the, uh, I don't know if, how much you know about Iceland, but we do have some glaciers in, in Iceland and we have actually lost a few in the last few years. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've actually put up some, uh, some memorials uh, in, yes. in uh, memoriam of them. Uh, one of our biggest glaciers today could not st sustain itself. It would be two glaciers uh, about half the size of what it is today if it would uh, uh, start growing today. So uh, we, we do feel the effects and we do see uh, how the weather is changing and how the climate is changing and that does have an impact as well and, and probably I think uh, has uh, also a positive impact on, on the mentality towards uh, sustainable uh, transportation modes. So, so that means that biking in Slovakia and in Trnava can help not melting your icebergs, hopefully. Oh, definitely, definitely. Okay, so thank you very much thank once you. more.